wonderful world of Disney. This week, from the wonderful world of make-believe, an adventure in color and math magic land. And now your host, Walt Disney. The world we live in would look pretty dull if Mother Nature used a black and white palette and painted only in shades of gray like this. But before we brighten things up with color in this show, it might be appropriate to recall those times when the movies, too, had their gray days, way back in the old silent era. In fact, when the animated cartoon was created, nobody gave color a second thought. Giving life to a static comic strip character was magic enough. And as for sound, well, if a cartoon character had something to say, he said it like this. If you wanted music, well, you could only pray that the theater organist would play the right tune at the right time. That was the situation when I first stepped into the entertainment world some 40 years ago. Then came a very important breakthrough. Steamboat Willie was the first sound film in the animated cartoon field. And it couldn't have happened to a nicer guy than Mickey. Now the whole world of music could serve as a creative inspiration for our stories. And so in 1929, the Silly Symphony was born. crude and primitive, but we had sound and music. However, one vital dimension was still missing, color. It was an impractical dream, something at the end of the rainbow. But in our business, dreams have a way of coming true. Color does brighten things up, doesn't it? When Technicolor made the breakthrough with the first three color process, I wanted to cheer. Flowers and Trees was the first full-color film to hit the motion picture screen. It made quite a splash. Of course, by today's standards, this early effort seemed limited. But here is how we handled a similar subject a few years later in Fantasia. Here in our paint lab is where the whole magic of color begins. For 30 years now, we've been living in this exciting world of color. These are earth colors a gift from Mother Nature who took millions of years to make them. Others are created by the magic miracle of modern chemistry. With such basic pigments as these, we can make all the colors of the rainbow. Girl, just a moment. Haven't you gotten a word? We're in full color. Oh well, a bit of color magic will fix it. Bibbity, bobbity, blue. <laughs> I must have said the wrong words. Let's see, uh, ah, uh, I know. NBC Color TV. Well, that's more like it. Yes, color gives us an exciting dimension to add to our programs. For the past seven years, we've presented our shows in black and white. Those of you without color television will continue to see our programs as you always have. And we will continue to entertain you with stories which will cover a wide field of new and exciting subjects. From fact and fantasy to tales of adventure, from music and dancing to people and places. 
But to come back to the subject of color, it is such a fascinating topic that we've invited the world's foremost authority to throw some light on the subject. He's a renowned scientist, lecturer, psychologist, world traveler, my old friend and longtime associate, Professor... Uh, here you are, Professor Ludwig von Drake. So here now to tell you all about the wonderful world of color, Professor von Drake himself. Good evening. Now, the first thing I would like to say is, look out! That crazy bar, you're going with that thing! <laughs> oh, look! How do you like that? I thought it was a motorcycle coming at me, and it was the spotlight was hitting me because I'm the professor going to give a lecture. <laughs> well, anyway, let me introduce myself. How do you do? I am Professor Ludwig von Drake, and today we are going to discuss the wonderful world of color. In fact, I got it all written down here in black and white. Black and white. <laughs> but I needed some notes in color. That's what I really need. This whole program is being seen in color. <laughs> and that's a lie. You know that's a lie. Because only the people with color TV sets is seeing it in color. <laughs> well, all right. Now for the occasion, I wore this vest, especially. For you people with colorblind TV sets, I'm going to describe this beautiful vest to you with all the colors. Now, there's red, there's blue, there's orange, there's jade, green, there's lemon yellow, and there's, uh, there's, uh, pot roast. Pot roast? Pot roast isn't a color. Oh, brown, that's what it is. <laughs> oh, when you see this in gorgeous full color, you know something? You're gonna get sick. <laughs> I can't even stand it. All right, now to the subject. What is the subject? I forgot I got carried away with all this. Oh, yes. Color. That is the subject we're going to discuss. Now, first of all, there are three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. And with these, you can make any color you want. Red and yellow make orange, blue and yellow, and you got a green thumb. <laughs> you should see my chrysanthemum. You should see my chrysanthemum. You should see my petunias. Now, you mix them all together, and they spell muddy. And uh, then you got black. And that's exactly the way things were in the very beginning of time. Black. Man was completely in the dark about color. Why? Because he was stupid. That's why. He didn't have a color expert like me to teach him. This kid had to learn everything the hard way. And when he was cold, he turned blue. When he discovered fire, he discovered a nice, warm, red. <laughs> and then when he found out you mix yellow with blue, it gave him a very nice green. So green became man's favorite color. Even today, you give a man plenty of green stuff and he's got no problems. <laughs> but you give man a green steak and, well, that's a horse of a different color. <laughs> Fact, it's a duck of a different color. You want to look at it that way. So, you see, color can even affect your appetite. Now, it's altogether different if you're a dog. Are you a dog? All right, if you're a dog, will you please leave because we're going to discuss you. All dogs watching this program will now leave. Did you leave? They left. I got to tell you the truth. I, I said that because I don't want to hurt the dog's feelings. You see, dogs don't know this. We know this. We scientists. Dogs is colorblind. You see, they only see in black and white. In fact, you know, they don't even care if a steak is green, blue, purple, or plaid. <laughs> well, anyway, this all proves one important thing. <laughs> don't buy your dog a color TV set. Now, my dog sits at home watching the old black and white set, and he's perfectly happy. And I want you all to be happy just like my dog. And so, especially for you people who are watching me in black and white, I'm going to sing a colorful little song. And when you hear this, you're going to know that they don't call me Elvis Van Drake for nothing. <laughs> All right, hit a note. They... Oh. <laughs> I was reading a fly spec. Get off her there, you cookie fly, you. All right. <clears throat> That's the whole introduction? And you're supposed to do it in the right key, too, isn't that right? I'm blue as I can be, green with jealousy, yeah. 
Hello, what you do unto me? I've got those green with envy blue. I mean those red with anger blue. And that's the purple with fashion blues. Oh, by you. Gonna squeeze me with the seeds, need the mellow yellow moon, so I can lose those green with envy, red with anger, purple passionate blues. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, I gotta get something for that. <laughs> purple with passion blues. Squeeze me, need a mellow yellow moon, so I can lose those green bit and be red bit anger, purple, passionate blues. And that's the green bit and be blue. <laughs> Did you hear that note? <laughs> it came out blue. <laughs> all right, all you cool cats, now back to the lecture. Now, you know something? Without light, there is no color. All right, turn out the lights. The hey, up there, wake up! There, you see? Nothing. Without light, it's nothing. And without light, how do we know what this is? A tennis ball or a rutabaga? So, now let's have some light on the subject. Aha! An orange, maybe. Maybe. A large plum? No. A head of lettuce? No? Now, we put all the colors together, red, blue, and green, which gives white. I'm surprised. Isn't you? Of course you are. <laughs> now we can see what we got. A juicy red apple. <laughs> that just proves one thing. Never eat an apple in the dark. Oh, it's raining. Call off the lecture. Wait, uh, all right, give them a rain check. We come back. Goodbye. And then, oh, what am I saying? Look at <laughs> That was no rain. That was the spectrum. You see the flashing off of my spectacles. And uh, that breaks up the light into a color spectacular. It's like a rainbow. Now, let's see what's at the end of the rainbow. Gold, a pot, no, a piano, of course. Now, the human brain, and that's located in the head, you know, somewhere, sees only one octave of color. But even with our little color octave here, we can mix 10 million different shades. And I ought to know because I counted every one of them just before the program. Now, for a little color harmony. For the first time on TV, Van Drake will play for you in color. I call it a spectrum song because it's about that. So now we're gonna do the song for you. One, eight, two. Red, yellow, green, red, blue, 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 red, purple, green, yellow, orange, red, 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 yellow, green, red, blue, 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 red, purple, green, yellow, orange, red, red. Blend them up and what do you get? Cerise, chartreuse, and aqua, mauve, beige, and ultramarine, and every color in between. Yes, can you buy something? Bow, wow, color has its harmony, and just like I have said, Red, yellow, green, red, blue, 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 red, purple, green, yellow, blue, purple, purple. Wait a second, what am I saying? It's supposed to finish with the red. Red. Now, all right, we know that everybody don't have television sets with color, so we're going to do a version for them. We don't want you to feel left out of this. Here's for you. Black, black, gray, white, gray, 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 white, gray, white, gray, gray, white, black, 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 gray, white, gray, 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 white, white, gray, 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 black, black. All right, now you happy? You don't feel left out? Now I want to get back to my song. Blend them up and what do you get? Sorry, chateaus and aqua, mau, beige and ultramarine and every color in between. Whoops, hi, hi, ho, say, 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 color has its harmony. And just like I have said, red, yellow, green, red, blue, 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 red, purple, green, blue, purple, red, and white, and green, and red, and red, and blue, and, 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 Whew. Ooh, what a show-off. How do you like that guy? I'm gonna let you in on something. 
Confidentially, he dyes his feathers. Stay tuned. Walt Disney Presents will be right back. The world of Disney and, and the world of nature have been sort of one thing for a long time now. Roy Disney, Vice Chairman of the Board, the Walt Disney Company. Walt always said it had all started with a mouse. I was lucky enough to have begun my career, really, working on the very earliest of the nature films, the True Life Adventures at the studio, The Living Desert and the Vanishing Prairie. Disney's Animal Kingdom in Florida continues a commitment to the natural world. When we started to design Disney's Animal Kingdom, we recognized that the act of conservation is something that we really need to be a part of, breeding animals in captivity and finding ways to release them back into the wild. The Walt Disney Company promotes conservation education by supporting the American Zoo and Aquarium Association. The American Zoo and Aquarium Association is a federation of very concerned conservationists. Here at the LA Zoo, for instance, they're breeding in captivity these golden tamarind, which are native to Brazil, and eventually they're going to be released back into their own native habitat and hopefully restock the population. Learning about nature can't begin too early. Zoos and aquariums are the first experience most kids will have with wildlife. And I think they're enormously important starting places in the education of all our, our young people. We've helped fund an educational program for the AZA to get its message out to the public at large. It happens, it's in my name, and I'm very flattered and pleased, but the most important thing we can do is keep teaching our kids how important this world of ours is that we live in. It's as simple as that. And now, back to Walt Disney Presents, right here on Disney. We come to the time for the question and answer period. And if there's anything at all that you want to ask me, you call me up and we discuss it, because this is the disgusting part of the program. <laughs> all right, everybody, the number to call is Rainbow 2800. Hello? Yes? Hold it. All right. Yes? What do you want? All right, you, the wrong number. Oh, fire department, you got a fire on your house. Oh, that's very interesting. <laughs> well, I would say run, run, whatever you do. No, Fido, I'm sorry, you're a little late. We all are at the stakes. One moment, please. Hold the line, be right with you, madam. Hello? Yes? And two dozen what? Uh, no, I, lady, you got the wrong number. All right, stand by. You what? You want to know how color TV works? Well, it works very good. What do you want? What are you bugging me with calling me every couple of seconds? Oh, 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 I'm sorry. You want a technical explanation? Huh, I don't like the wise guy calling up, trying to stump the Professor Van Drake, you see, well? <laughs> now, it's all done with mirrors. Now, everybody knows you have a camel. Now, the picture comes in here and is broken down into three primaries, and it's picked up by the election tubes after the primary. It goes on, and there's a little governor in there that gives it a little push on the side, and it takes two, and it changes into uh, wolves. And then they fly like little homing peacocks through the air, and the wires in your set pick the color out of the air and throw them into the inside. Oh, 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 be sure never to touch the green wire with the blue or vice virtue. That can be dangerous. Oh, you don't know. Ah! I know. Oh, I know. Believe me, I found out. And that's how I became an expert. Now, as you see, the red tube picks up red. The blue picks up blue. Blue the picks up the blue. Blue the picks up the blue. And green, of course, picks up pickles. Look at that little honey there. <laughs> I was wondering where I put that thing. Oh, look at that pickle. This is a real dilly. What happened to the Swiss cheese I had in here, a Swiss cheese set? Now, let's see. Did I forget anything? What's this? This doesn't even belong here. Besides, what do you want to bother your head about all this technical stuff? It's very simple. All you do, you turn this little knob, and you got your picture. See? That's all. All right, come on. You turn the little knob, and you got the picture. All right, I turned the knob. Didn't I turn the knob? What are you doing with that? It's... Yes, it is. I'm to 
Eu am mai pare una oare. <laughs> Unde se zmimana? exciting and fascinating to all of us. But there is another equally fascinating world, and that is the world of mathematics. Now, most people think of mathematics the way we use it here in our color laboratory as weights and measures, as equations and exact formulas. And of course, the right proportions are very important too. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that Mathematics isn't all attractive figures. Uh, will you kids uh, get out of here so I can finish my speech? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> What I mean is, mathematics isn't all theories of numbers and quantities. It can be a very fascinating subject. In fact, you'll find it in the most unlikely places. So now, another of our associates will guide us on an adventure in Mathematic Land. Now 
Hello, Donald. Catch me. Where am I? Mathematic land. That's magic land. Go on, go on. It's the land of great adventure. Now, who are you? I'm a spirit. The true spirit of adventure. That's for me. What's next? A journey through the wonderland of mathematics. Mathematics? That's for all kids. Eggheads? Now, hold on, Donald. You like music, don't you? Yeah. Well, without eggheads, there would be no music. Uh. Come on. Let's go to ancient Greece. To the time of Pythagoras, the master egghead of them all. Pythagoras? The father of mathematics and music. Mathematics and music? Ah, you'll find mathematics in the darndest places. Watch. First, we'll need a string. <laughs> Stretch it good and tight. Plunk it. Now divide in half. Plunk again. You see? It's the same tone, one octave higher. Now divide the next section. And the next. Pythagoras discovered the octave had a ratio of two to one. With simple fractions, he got this. And from this harmony in numbers developed the musical scale of today. By God, you do find mathematics in the darndest places. You can imagine how excited Pythagoras was when he shared his findings with his pals of fraternity of eggheads, known as the Pythagoreans. They used to meet in secret to discuss their mathematical discoveries. Only members were allowed to attend. They had a secret emblem, the pentagram. Let's see what the topic is for today. the Pythagoreans, with their mathematical formula, came the basis of our music of today.
It was our old friend Pythagoras who discovered that the pentagram was full of mathematic. The two shorter lines combined exactly equal the third. And this line shows the magic proportions of the famous golden section. The second and third lines exactly equal the fourth. Once again, we have the golden section. But this is only the beginning. Hidden within the pentagram is a secret for creating a golden rectangle, which the Greeks admired for its beautiful proportions and magic qualities. The star contains the golden rectangle many times over. It's a most remarkable shape. It can mathematically reproduce itself indefinitely. All these rectangles have exactly the same proportions. This figure also contains a magic spiral that repeats the proportions of the golden section into infinity. To the Greeks, the golden rectangle represented a mathematical law of beauty. We find it in their classical architecture. The Parthenon, perhaps one of the most famous of early Greek buildings, contains many golden rectangles. Proportions are also found in their sculpture. In the centuries that followed, the golden rectangle dominated the idea of beauty in architecture throughout the Western world. The Cathedral of Notre Dame is an outstanding example. The Renaissance painters knew this secret well. Stay tuned. Walt Disney Presents will be right back. Hey guys, what's up? I'm Hilary Duff. And, and I'm Christy is... Romano. They star in Cadet Kelly. Attend, hut! The new Disney Channel original movie. Cadet Kelly Collins. Reporting for duty, sir. We're on the set of Cadet Kelly in the fabulous wardrobe truck. And we're gonna just show you the ins and outs of fashion. Now we know that camo is very hip right now. Yeah. Number one, cute hat. Now this, I think this would be a little too warm. Look, we can deck it out with some fun purses. <laughs> that is hip. Accessories are key. You can have this ugly bag. I can have the package bag. <laughs> Thank you, Hillary. <laughs> Jennifer Stone doesn't have too many cool things. I have a nice dress, but she gets it dirty. <laughs> In Cadet Kelly, Hillary and Christy make Olive Drab totally fab. G-W-M-A! G-W-M-A! We're best friends. <laughs> Cadet Kelly, the new Disney Channel original movie, opening Friday, March 8th, part of Zoog Weekends. Hi, I'm Joe Marie Payton, and I do the voice of Sugar Mama on The Proud Family. Come on over here and rub Sugar Mama's feet. Ugh. Sugar Mama's the boss. Read my lips. Read it. She loves her family. I always said you and I spoke the same language. They all love her. Turn that back on. I was watching this. They respect her more than anything else. She's honest to a fault. Boy would lose his head if it wasn't on his shoulders. That's cold, Mama. The truth hurts, boy. Sugar Mama looks old. What? But she's really young. Sugar Mama! She is so full of life. Sugar Mama likes music. Drink that fucking chicken, doctor. <laughs> 
in which it happened. And they never said sugar. It's sugar, mama. Sugar. Isn't that what I said? Come here and give me some sugar. Sugar mama knows how to live life. But it's party time. We should all be like sugar mama. You sure put a smile on my face. The Proud Family, Fridays at 7, 6 Central, part of Zoog Weekends. And now, back to Walt Disney Presents, right here on Disney. Today, the golden rectangle is very much a part of our modern world. Modern painters have rediscovered the magic of these proportions. Indeed, this ideal proportion is to be found in life itself. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. This is not magic. I got not the one that figures like that. Ah, 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 Donald. Get me to earn it. No, no. Ideal proportion. Not quite. Ha, uh ha. -uh. No, I'm afraid not. Well, we can't all be mathematically perfect. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I do want to do it. Now that you're all pent up in a pentagon, let's see how nature uses this same mathematical form, the petunia, the star jasmine, the starfish, the wax flower, There are literally thousands of members in good standing in nature's Pythagorean society of the star. All nature's works have a mathematical logic and her patterns are limitless. Portions of the golden section are often found in the spirals of nature's designs. The profusion of mathematical forms brings to mind the words of Pythagoras. Everything is arranged according to number and mathematical shape. Yes, there is mathematics in music, in art, in just about everything. And as the Greeks had guessed, the rules are always the same. Enjoy your geometrical journey? Gee, Mr. Spirit, there's a lot more to mathematics than two times two. That's right, Donald. And you can find mathematics in games, too. Games? Oh, boy. Let's begin with a game that's played on squares. Checkers? No, chess. Chess? A mathematical contest between two minds. It's a game that has been enjoyed for centuries by kings and commoners. In fact, Lewis Carroll, a famous mathematician with a literary mind used chess as a setting for his classic tale, Through the Looking Glass. Alice found herself face to face with a none too friendly group of chess pieces. Good heavens, what's this? Upon my soul, it appears to be a lost pawn. I'm your pawn, I'm Donald Duck. He says he's Donald Duck. Pre Preposterous. Or it could be an Alice. Alice! No, no, no. It's a lost pawn. Lost pawn? Stop that pawn! Ow, Mr. Spirit! Ow, ow, ow. Oh, that was 
Chess, chess. Chess is a game of calculated strategy. And since the board is geometrical, the moves are mathematical. What's next? Practically all games are played on geometrical areas. The baseball field is a diamond. Oh, boy! And without mathematics, we couldn't even keep score. Oh. Football is played on a rectangle divided by yard lines. <coughs> Basketball is a game of circles, spheres, and rectangles. Even hopscotch has its multiple squares. What's next? Can I do it? No. A mathematical game played on a field of two perfect squares, using three perfect spheres, and a lot of diamonds. In other words, billiards. Oh, boy! That's for me! You know the game, don't you, Donald? Of course! Get two balls, get it get on the two balls. Like this. Now let's see how an expert at three cushion billiards uses his head. Three cushion? Yes. The cue ball not only has to hit both the other balls, but it must contact at least three cushions before it hits the final ball. an expert to make several shots in succession. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wow! That was a lucky shot. Luck? No, it's skill. For this game, you have to know all the angles. Striking the cue ball low, so it'll spin backwards. Hitting the ball on the right side will make it hug the rail. These trick shots take a lot of practice. <laughs> he missed it. <laughs> One, two, three. What's your best money to the market? Oh, this game takes precise calculation. He figures out each shot in his head. He could play it like this, but it calls for quite a bit of luck. There is a better choice. For this, he uses the diamond markings on the rail as a mathematical guide. First, he figures the natural angle for hitting the object balls. And then he finds that his cue ball must bounce off the number three diamond. Next, he gets ready for the shot, and he needs a number for his cue position. This calls for a different set of numbers. Very confusing, isn't it? Not when you get the hang of it. You see, the cue position is four. Now a simple subtraction. Three from four is one. So if he shoots for the first diamond, he should make it. It's called playing the diamond system. <laughs> 
Natural angle, two. Q position, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half. Two from three and a half is one and a half. So, shoot halfway between the first and second diamonds. No, no, Donald. There's no guesswork to mathematics. It's quite simple. Natural angle for the hit. Two. Q position. Three and a half. How much is three and a half minus two? Uh, one and a half. Tough for yourself, Donald. How do you like that for mathematics, Mr. Spirit? Wonderful, Donald. And now you're ready for the most exciting game of all. Oh, boy! And the playing field for this game is in the mind. Uh-oh. Look at the condition of your mind. Antiquated ideas, bungling, false concepts, superstitions, confusion. To think straight, we'll have to clean house. There, that's more like it. A nice, clean sweep. This game is played with circles and triangles. Think of a perfect circle. A perfect circle. Perfect circle. Perfect. Ah. Put a triangle inside and turn it. Now spin the circle. And what have you got? A ball. Yes, a sphere. The shape of things is first discovered in the mind. Slice off the top, and we have a... A magnifying glass. That's right. A lens is a section of a sphere. All optical instruments are created through mathematics. You see, there's a lot more to mathematics than just numbers and equations. Let's get back to our circle and triangle. Roll it, and we have a... A, a wheel! The circle has been the basis for many of man's important inventions. The mind can create the most amazing things. If we spin the triangle, we have a... Cone. Slice the cone. <laughs> the cone is full of useful mathematical shapes. Slice it again. Slice it several times. The orbits of all planets and satellites can be found in the cone. No matter how you slice it, it's always mathematics. A slice like this gives us the reflector of a searchlight. A slice like this, the mirror of a giant telescope. A line on a cone, and we have a drill. And a spring. Now you're ticking. The 
mind is the birthplace for all of man's scientific achievements. knows no limits when used properly. Think of a pentagram, Donald. Now put another inside, a third, and a fourth. No pencil is sharp enough to draw as fine as you can think, and no paper large enough to hold your imagination. In fact, it is only in the mind that we can conceive infinity. Mathematical thinking has opened the doors to the exciting adventures of science. I'm your door dog. I've never seen so many doors before. Each discovery leads to many others. An endless chain. Hey, what's the matter with these doors? Hey, these doors won't open. They're locked. Of course they are locked. These are the doors of the future. And the key is... Mathematics! Right. Mathematics. The boundless treasures of science are locked behind those doors. In time, they will be opened by the curious and inquiring minds of future generations. In the words of Galileo, mathematics is the alphabet with which God has written the universe.